A spooky tale of camping and the paranormal. On Memorial Weekend, my family and I were filled with anticipation and excitement as we set out on a journey into the heart of the forest. We couldn't wait to leave behind the stresses of daily life and immerse ourselves in the beauty of nature. Our destination was a hidden paradise, a secluded campsite ensconced in the woods of Oakhurst, California. It was a route less taken, known only to those who actively searched for it. As we drew near, winding through narrow roads and crossing babbling streams, the grandeur of the forest began to reveal itself to us. Towering trees rose up on either side of the road, their branches stretching towards the sky in an endless dance with the wind. The dappled light filtering through their leaves cast shifting patterns on the forest floor, creating a world of shadows and light. As we stepped into the campsite, I was immediately awed by the majesty of our surroundings. The forest burst to life around us, a bustling ecosystem teeming with vitality. The air was thick with the aroma of pine and earth. Enveloped by a sea of lush greenery and vibrant wildflowers, the ground beneath our feet was soft and cushioned by a bed of fragrant pine needles and fallen leaves. The gentle melody of a nearby stream permeated the air. As we ventured into the wilderness, we were greeted by a serene oasis of nature. Together, we worked harmoniously to set up our campsite, pitching our tents and organizing our supplies with a shared sense of camaraderie. The gentle rustling of leaves added to the peaceful ambience that enveloped us. Everywhere we looked, the natural landscape took our breath away. With majestic mountains towering in the distance and a tranquil stream glistening nearby. As everyone set up camp, the sun beat down upon us, casting a warm and welcoming glow over the entire area. Its rays illuminated the natural beauty surrounding us, highlighting every detail of the lush landscape. The leaves of the trees shimmered in the sunlight, and the wildflowers glowed with a vibrancy that seemed almost supernatural. As the sun slowly descended, casting a warm glow across the sky, we gathered around the dancing flames of the campfire. Stories were shared, songs were sung, and laughter echoed through the peaceful night. I felt a deep sense of appreciation for the joy and company of those around me. Their contagious energy and beaming smiles seemed to push away any hint of darkness and surround us in a light-hearted and carefree atmosphere. The night had been so enjoyable that we were completely oblivious to the time, only realizing it was 2 a.m. when we finally stopped to check. Reluctantly, we all agreed to end the night and head to bed. As for me, I found myself struggling to fall asleep despite the mild chill. While my companions slept peacefully, my mind continued to race with thoughts and emotions that refused to be silenced. The night seemed to stretch endlessly, and the darkness only served to amplify my feelings of restlessness and discomfort. It wasn't until the first rays of sunlight appeared on the horizon that my mind finally quieted, and I succumbed to a fitful doze. As I opened my eyes and rose from my sleep, the joyful sound of chatter and laughter filled the air. I could see that everyone was already up, busily preparing breakfast and enjoying each other's company. After we had finished eating, we eagerly embarked on a hike to explore the surrounding area. Along the trail, something caught my eye, and I veered off to capture a photo. But when I turned around, a sense of dread crept over me as I realized that every direction looked identical. Everyone else had continued along the trail, leaving me behind. Fear began to take hold as I recalled warnings about the dangers of getting lost in the wild. I retraced my steps, hoping to find the path, but everything seemed unfamiliar. 
Even trying to go in the opposite direction did not feel right. I frantically searched for any recognizable landmark or signpost to guide me back to my group. With a mixture of anxiety and terror, my heart was pounding so hard in my chest that I could feel it in my ears. I frantically scanned the dense trees surrounding me, my eyes darting back and forth in a frenzy of fear. Every rustle of the leaves or snap of a twig sent shivers down my spine, as I desperately tried to catch a glimpse of the trail. Finally, my legs gave out from beneath me and I collapsed onto a fallen tree, gasping for air. The weight of my own terror felt like a crushing weight on my chest, as I struggled to calm my racing thoughts and steady my labored breaths. With a sense of determination, I took off my sweater and placed it on the ground, bracing myself to retrace my steps and find my way back to the path. But as I stumbled through the dense wilderness, the feeling of dread only grew stronger, and I began to panic. It felt like I had strayed too far from the trail to ever find it again, and the weight of my fear was suffocating. Every tree looked the same, and every step felt like a step closer to being lost forever. Just when I thought all was lost, Jenna's voice cut through the silence. Olivia! Calling my name. I turned around, and there she was, standing just a few feet away from me on the trail. The relief that washed over me was overwhelming, and I felt my body loosen as I realized that I was no longer alone in the wilderness. Feeling bewildered and disoriented, I couldn't believe my eyes. Just moments ago, the trail had been invisible, but now it was as clear as day. As I picked up my sweater, my hands were trembling with a mix of fear and confusion. My body was still shaking from the rush of emotions that had overtaken me. I made my way over to Jenna, and a sense of relief flooded through me. But it was quickly replaced by a deep sense of embarrassment and shame. When she asked me what I was doing, I hesitated. Unsure of how to explain my sudden sense of panic and disorientation. Finally, with a quivering voice, I managed to stammer out. I was trying to find the trail. But for some reason, I couldn't see it until you came back for me. Those words hung in the air, enveloped by the lingering sense of dread and uncertainty that had gripped me just moments before. Despite the embarrassment and confusion that lingered within me, I felt a sense of relief as we set off down the trail, with Jenna leading the way. As we joined the rest of the group, a sense of disquiet settled within me like a heavy weight. I tried to push it aside and focus on the activities at hand, but the feeling persisted, nagging at me like a splinter in my mind. It was frustrating and disconcerting, and I couldn't help but feel on edge. With each passing moment, the feeling grew stronger, and I found myself distracted and unable to fully engage in the group's activities. It was as if something was gnawing at me from the inside, and I couldn't wait for it to pass. I felt restless and uneasy, like I was waiting for something to happen, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. As we began to cook dinner, a rustling sound in the nearby woods caught our attention. We all froze, exchanging fearful glances as the noise grew louder and more distinct. Our hearts pounded in our chests as a man appeared from the shadows of the trees, his face twisted into a wide, toothy grin that seemed almost too friendly. As the man strode confidently towards us, his children following obediently behind him like a flock of ducklings, his eyes darted back and forth, taking in our presence with an intense scrutiny that made me feel uncomfortable. Though he smiled broadly, his teeth flashing in the dim light, his expression felt more calculating than friendly. As he drew nearer, his children close behind him like silent shadows, a chill ran down my spine and I felt a sense of foreboding settle in the pit of my stomach. 
The whole scene felt off, and I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something not quite right about this encounter. Uncle Tony, always the vigilant one, stood up to greet the stranger, his hand outstretched in a gesture of welcome. To our surprise, the man offered him a bottle of wine, explaining that he was trying to teach his children about the importance of kindness. He mentioned his family's campsite on the other side of the woods and was exploring the area. However, we saw no signs of light or life beyond the trees, and the darkness closed in on us, leaving us vulnerable and exposed. The stranger's sudden appearance and vague explanation about his campsite left me feeling uneasy, as if secrets were lurking just out of our reach. Just when I thought the strange encounter had come to an end, the man unzipped his backpack and produced another bottle of wine. This, my friend, is a very special one. He said, his voice low and mysterious. Before I go, I would like to request permission to pass through your campsite. His request seemed odd, and we exchanged uneasy glances amongst ourselves. Despite our apprehension, Uncle Tony accepted and thanked him politely. The man and his children vanished into the dark woods as quickly and mysteriously as they had appeared, their sudden departure leaving us feeling disoriented and unnerved. We were all taken aback by the strange encounter, unsure of what to make of the man's cryptic behavior. But before we could even begin to process what had happened, Uncle Tony broke the tension by exclaiming that we now had a special gift to enjoy. We could feel the anticipation building in the air as we eagerly awaited what was to come. The bizarre encounter we had experienced was quickly forgotten as we laughed, joked, and basked in the comforting warmth of the campfire. As we enjoyed the evening, the strange events of the day continued to haunt me. The darkness seemed to grow more suffocating with each passing moment. The towering trees loomed above us like ominous guardians, their branches creaking and groaning in the icy wind. The ground beneath our feet had frozen solid, causing brittle twigs to snap with each step we took. Our breaths billowed into frosty clouds in the frigid air, and despite our jackets and blankets, the bone-chilling cold still seeped through. A mounting sense of unease crept over me, causing me to avoid scrutinizing the shadows too closely, fearful of the unknown horrors that may be lurking there. As the night wore on, a sense of weariness began to settle over us, and one by one, we reluctantly bid each other good night. With heavy hearts, we retreated to our beds, overcome by a mixture of fatigue and the bittersweet realization that the night had come to an end. Exhaustion weighed heavily on my mind, but my unspoken fears kept sleep at bay. Just as I was beginning to drift into a restless sleep, a sudden, ear-splitting scream <coughs> echoed through the stillness of the night. It was so chillingly loud it felt as though it had ripped through the very fabric of the darkness. My heart raced as I scrambled out of the tent, desperately seeking the source of the sound. And then, I saw him. Uncle Tony, writhing in agony with his face contorted in terror, as if he had just been confronted by a nameless horror. As I witnessed his anguish, my heart pounded with a gripping sense of fear, for he had always been the unflinching one in the face of danger, no matter how grave the situation. Racing towards him, my heart pounded with a gripping sense of terror that left me breathless. As the others emerged from their tents, their faces twisted in fear, we clustered around him, desperate for answers to the mystery that had seized hold of us. We barraged him with questions, each of us consumed with a feverish need to understand the inexplicable terror that had gripped him. With an air of terror, he recounted his harrowing experience to us, his eyes bulging with fear. He vividly described hearing the unmistakable sound of someone pacing around his tent, their breaths heavy and labored. The eerie sound of twigs snapping underfoot only served to intensify his already mounting sense of unease. 
The moment silence descended, a foreboding presence descended upon him, a heavy weight that paralyzed him, rendering him totally helpless. Despite his desperate attempts to move, he found himself trapped. The vague outline of a shadowy figure began to materialize before him, accompanied by a cacophony of incomprehensible sounds that only added to his growing terror. If it weren't for the gentle touch of Aunt Judy, he might never have broken free from the grip of fear that had taken hold of him. She assumed he was shivering from the cold, she had kindly covered him with a blanket, unaware of the true nightmare he was experiencing. Initially, we dismissed the possibility that he was experiencing anything other than a nightmare. However, as I surveyed our surroundings, my senses heightened in an attempt to detect any potential danger lurking in the shadows. My gaze landed on a trail of broken twigs that encircled Uncle Tony's tent. It was as though some malicious force had deliberately marked it. A wave of fear washed over me as I traced the path of snapped twigs with my eyes, my heart racing with a sense of dread and foreboding. Fueled by a primal fear that consumed us, my companions and I hastily gathered our belongings and fled the cursed campsite, our hearts pounding with a sense of urgency. As we raced away, a vow formed in our minds to never return to that foreboding place again. We were determined to banish the haunting memories of that fateful night to the recesses of our minds. However, the lessons we gleaned in that moment would remain with us for eternity, serving as a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike when we least expected it. The fear that gripped us that night was so overwhelming that we had completely forgotten about the strange gift of wine we received from that eerie family. It wasn't until we gathered together once again, our nerves still raw and frayed, that we remembered the bottles. As we talked about the frightening events of that night, a sense of dread washed over us all as we realized that the wine was missing. None of us had taken it or consumed it, leaving us to wonder what sinister fate had befallen those mysterious bottles. A chilling thought crossed our minds. What if the family had been cursed or in some kind of danger and had passed on the wine to us as a way to escape their fate? The fact that they had asked for our permission to pass through our campsite, which was an unusual request, only added to our growing suspicion. We had camped in that area numerous times before and no one had ever asked for permission to pass by. As we discussed the situation amongst ourselves, we realized that we had more questions than answers, and the mystery of the strange family and their gift of wine only deepened.